Pugilistic programmers, this is Prop G, and in this short video, we're gonna create the Bip the Guy Xcode project, download and install the resources for the Bip the Guy app, we'll set up the basic user interface for the app, and we'll get a sound to play when an image is tapped. And along the way, we'll learn about an alternate button format that will include a label where we can add an icon, and we'll use an on-tap gesture modifier. It has nothing to do with beverages at your favorite watering hole, and instead, it'll allow us to recognize when our image is tapped so that we can play a sound. Animation will be in the next video, but let's begin this build. So let's create a new Xcode project, an iOS app. This is of course a Swift UI app, and we don't need any tests or core data. Feel free to call your app Bip the Guy. I'm going to call mine Bip the Guy Swift UI to distinguish it from the Bip the Guy app we create in my UI kit course. I'll create this on the desktop. Double click the Windows title bar to expand to full screen. I have my scheme already set to iPhone 14 Pro. And before I forget, I'm going to click the blue project icon in the project navigator and set the display name to Bip the Guy. Then I'll adjust my layout in the content view. But we really want to start out in the assets catalog, so be sure to click assets in the project navigator. Then to download the assets we need for this project, open a browser and head to the URL bit.ly slash prof dash g dash swift ui dash files, all lowercase. Right click on the Bip the Guy files and select download. My browser asks where I want to download files. Yours probably saves these to the download folder. Then from the finder, I'll pull up the folder that I just downloaded. Then back in Xcode's asset catalog, I'm going to select app icon, then switch back to the finder. And in the Bip the Guy files folder, I'm going to drag over the file named Bip the Guy icon and drop it inside the 1024 by 1024 box in the app icon. We've now got an app icon. Then back in the finder, I'm going to select the Bip Launch Screen Images folder and command click to also select clown and punch sound and I'll drag these in the assets catalog too. And now let's head to the content view and code up our interface. I'll highlight and delete the default system image and text that Xcode gives me for a new project. And in the VStack, I'll add an image with no label between the parens, but if I pass in the string clown, lowercase, then this is going to get the image with the name clown that's inside of our assets catalog that we just copied in there. And that's truly terrifying. So let's add a dot resizable modifier below and a dot scale to fit and slightly less creepy. Then I'm going to add a spacer above and below the image and below the last spacer in the V stack, I'm going to add a button. But when entering button, look at the different options we have in code completion. Select this one that we haven't used before with action and label. This creates a button with a custom label. So press return to accept this. And it's a bit confusing because in our prior lessons, we used the option with the string between parens and then followed this with a trailing closure that was the button action. But here, the button action comes first. And the label part that includes the text inside of the button comes after that. And we see this format that shows the parens and an arrow and a void. This means it accepts a closure, meaning it wants a code block between curly braces. But if you press return with this first action option highlighted, we see a nicer format with two closures, two empty curly braces waiting to be filled in. Now for the first set of curly braces, this is our action. The second one is the label. And for that first closure, I'm just going to enter a to do comment for now stating button action here. But what's this label stuff? Well, let's start typing in the word label between the second set of curlies, and we see a bunch of options. Now, label is sort of like a text view, but one of the things that a label can do that we want to take advantage of is we can add images next to text. Now, we see an option here with title and system image, another with title and image. The one that's just straight image would allow us to take an image from the asset catalog, but we want to use a system image. So highlight the option with title and system image, we can see from code completion that both of these input values are strings. Press return to accept this. And for the first string, the title, we'll put in photo library, capital P, capital L. This is going to be the title of the button. And for the second string, since it wants a system image, let's look at what's available in the SF symbols app. So I'm going to press command space to open up spotlight. I'll type SF symbols in here, press return. That launches the SF symbols app that we downloaded in our very first app. If you don't have this, you can search for it online and download it for free. Then in the app search field, I'm going to type in photo and look at all these options. Now, I like the option that looks like a photo on a photo. It's sort of filled in here. And if we take a look at what it's called underneath, it says photo.fill.on.rectangle.fill. But instead of trying to remember all of that, I'm just going to right click on it, select copy name, return to Xcode, and between double quotes after system image, I'm going to paste this in, and we can see that the image shows up in the live preview. And note that even though the code for creating the label view requires the title before the system image, the system image actually shows before the title. Nice.
Also know that even if you set up the button this way with a label, the button style modifier is still available to you. So for example, you could add a button style modifier with border prominent, and this is what it looks like with our system icon, but I'm gonna delete this because I actually like the plain look for this app. Now let's play the punch sound when the image is tapped. So first, let's set up everything we need to play sound, and we've already done this in two apps. So you know we need to import AVF audio up top and make sure you allow code completion to add the correct capitalization. Then we need to declare an AV audio player object. So we're going to add this below the content view struct declaration with at state private var audio player, lower camel case, colon, AV audio player using code completion to get the caps right. And be sure to add an exclamation point after this, since this value needs to be an implicitly unwrapped optional, and we won't be using any additional optional handling code in our app. Now, since we wrote such a wonderfully modular play sound function, let's raid one of our earlier apps copy that code and paste it in here. So I happen to have the You Are Awesome app in my file menu, open Recents, I'll open mine up. Why don't you pause here and find an earlier project with play sound in it and open that up. And then you can use the jump bar to select the play sound function, which finds it in our code, highlight and copy this, then return to bip the guy and paste this in just before the closing curly for the struct. And we now have the ability to play sound in this app. Now let's play sound when the image is tapped. This is super easy to do. We'll just head up to the image view, then start to type dot on tap gesture. Code completion says this adds an action to perform when this view recognizes a tap gesture, meaning the image is tapped. Now note the closure. This is where we put the code that we want to run when the image is tapped. So press return to accept this. And then inside the closure, we'll just call play sound and we'll pass in the string punch sound. That's lowercase p capital S. No spaces in there. That's the exact name of the sound file that we copied into the assets catalog. And then in the preview, smack that clown! Ah, <laughs> uh, those sounds are so satisfying! In the next lesson, we'll get the image view to pulse with each punch. In this lesson, we learned a new button format and the on tap gesture modifier. Feel good about those accumulating skills, Swifter, and keep at it.